Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness community. And a number of my subscribers have awarded me of a video by Alpha Destiny, aka Strap Home Destiny, aka Alexander Leonidas, which is what he really should have named his channel, aka Grimly the Dwarf, which makes him as the pale orc, one of my sworn enemies. You know, orcs stomp the stunties. But he made a video, and some of the subscribers were like, Jason, I watched this video. You need to check it out, because it almost sounded like a Jason Blaha video, but coming from a dude who's shorter and doesn't train his legs, uh, and probably a virgin. Like, okay, so let me go check it out. So I did. So let me go ahead and put on my plus five hat of speechcraft. Lovingly called my plus five hat of autism by many of you, and uh, let's talk about this. Um, you know what? The message in this video is pretty good. Let's kind of come back to my point when I, when I give Alex a hard time. If every video that Alex made was along this theme, uh, I would never have started picking on him to begin with. I would never have had a beef with him to begin with. If he stopped doing his clown show circus, needs six different forms of accommodating resistance, refusing to do full range of motion, refusing to actually pull from the floor for a full range of motion on any exercise, like calling stuff deadlifts that's not really deadlifts, that he could do 200 pounds more than an actual deadlift one, right? All that stuff. Reverse band board presses with a slingshot, come on, bro. And I'm not even against accommodating resistance used intelligently, but there are limits. Um, all that stuff, and then selling is naturally enhanced. Which he tried to pimp in this, and I'm going to tell you guys, do not buy that book. It's garbage. I've read it. Uh, if you want to read the whole forward chapter, just go watch my first 500 videos. He basically quoted me word for word all the way through it without giving me credit or royalties or anything. And that's cool, man. That's cool. But the programming is terrible. Everyone who's run it has got piss poor gains and they're tiny as hell after they finish it. He doesn't even run it. That's not even how he trains. Let that sink in. So back over to the point. Um, the video itself, the message in it was good. In fact, you know, he was telling people they should squat. I, I agree, Alex, you should squat. Why don't you work on your squats? You're already doing powerlifting meets. You've been going to bench-only competitions, man. Actually work on something besides your upper body. Train your lower body for a change, man. Do some legs. And I don't mean one-legged zercher squats. You know damn well that doesn't work. One-legged exercises are not going to make you big and strong. No legitimate coach actually believes that other than, you know, curling X. And he's not about getting big and strong. So, you know, he's telling people that. But, I mean, all of that aside, I wish that he would actually fully follow his own advice. Because he tells guys to do stuff that's not going to make them stronger. Like all these three-inch range of motion parcels. You don't get stronger from that stuff. All the research says that you don't. It says you don't get bigger or stronger from it. Not compared to a normal range of motion. But, over to the point. It's at size equals strength. what I tell you guys. Um, if you look at any natural bodybuilder, and I mean a legitimately natural bodybuilder, there is no separation between really training for size or strength. It all flows together. I just did that the other day, you know, when I talked about the Omar program, didn't I? Right? We just, we talked about all that. We talked about that. Strength programs are size programs. If you want to maximize, maximize your strength at any given height or body weight, you have to have maximum hypertrophy, right? It is essential. All strength programs are hypertrophy programs. They have to be because if they don't have enough hypertrophic element to it, guess what? There's not enough training volume to get you maximally big through the different parts of the programming. You won't be maximally strong and vice versa. Any program that only has you do nothing but high reps, you know, traditional hypertrophy work, you won't get strong enough if that's all you're doing and you don't ever lift anything heavy, and particularly on the big exercises, and you do nothing but mostly smaller movements and machine work for high reps, you will stall out. You will stall out and you will stop making gains because you don't have the actual strength to go with the work capacity you're trying to build. Um, and it, it doesn't work very well. You will stall for very, very long periods of time. You have to get stronger to get bigger. And for most of the guys who are really small, they haven't built enough of a strength base to even worry about combining these elements together. Um, and that's where he's right. He's like, if you've got chicken legs and you can't squat over 300 for reps, well, there's your, there's your problem. And, and that's, that's realistic. And I know people will look at that and say, 
what are you talking about? In my gym, nobody squats that much. It's like, yeah, every guy at your gym is probably tiny unless they're on gear. Okay? You're probably tiny. Like, if you legitimately think that first-year novices shouldn't be benching 225 for reps at the end of the year and squatting 315 for reps after one year or year and a half of really hard training, even if their goals are just size, then you're probably pretty small if you're not on gear. I guarantee you there's a 95% chance or you're very, very genetically gifted. You are tiny as hell because you cannot separate the two. That's observable over decades of observing people. That's been looked at in multiple, numerous studies that the only way you start really skewing those ratios is with drugs. Is with drugs. The only guys who are disproportionately big to their size are the guy on drugs. Now, he did jump over and even pointed out, you know, someone like you, F, powerlifter, whatever his name is. So, he's got a really high bench, but he, he does have massive pecs. That is true. And there's there are, again, exceptions to some of these rules that involve levers, certain muscle fiber distributions. But for 95% of the population, the amount of weight that you can lift on, on multiple big exercises, not just one lift. In other words, you're not going to get really jacked off of getting strong at a single exercise. There's a lot of guys who are pretty strong at a deadlift who have okay size, but they're not particularly big, who are very strong on the deadlift, but you look at their other lifts and it's like, well, they're, they're okay. And they're perfectly built for the deadlift. They've got great leverages for it, right? So it, it's not just the one lift. It's getting strong at a number of big lifts. If you're strong at at least four or five big basic exercises, and I mean really strong, you are going to be big. You're going to be big. You cannot avoid that. Again, unless you're oftentimes maybe a very short guy and then your relative strength. But pound for pound strength tends to be towards what? What is every coach? Any coach who works with elite lifters knows this. Weight classes are height classes in disguise, Right? It's almost unheard of for people to get high Wilk scores outside of certain height ranges in any given weight class. It's almost unheard of. Pound for pound guys are usually really short. That's why they're pound for pound strong. And that's what the research shows too, by the way, that the shorter you are, the less muscle you need to move the same weight on a big exercise, right? That's been studied. There was a big research study done on that just last year that came out. Dr. Brad, Greg Knuckles, all those guys were involved in collecting data. Brett Contreras was in it. They all collected data together. And yeah, they figured that out. All right, size equals strength, but it is also affected by height. And they had to come up with formulas to account for the, the curve that the height throws in there. And they found the same thing. But people of the same height, their muscle mass will generally determine how strong they are overall within a real close margin compared to other guys their same height and frame size the deciding factor so uh he's absolutely right on that he's right you guys just need to get strong and if you guys are struggling to get bigger it's because you're lazy and you're not training for overall strength you're not training for progressive overload um, and i will be the first to say that yes you're going to have to oftentimes get stronger at a number of rep ranges right if for the majority of you, unless you are very genetically gifted you're not going to be able to do just tens and you're, you're not going to be able to do just singles for the next five years and get incredibly jacked. You're just not. You're actually gonna need to work on different rep ranges. You're gonna need to learn to periodize in one manner or another. You're gonna have to, right? Otherwise, you're gonna be that same guy who's going, well, this just isn't working, I'm still small. And I'm not even saying that additional smaller metabolic fatigue work doesn't work, but it needs to be done in addition to your big heavy exercises, not as a replacement for it. And all that stuff has its place in training. Because that additional metabolic fatigue, as you're building a strength base, or at once you have a strength base and you're continuing to get stronger at your big lifts, there are times when the smaller exercises will help add a little bit of muscle to weak points. And then the muscle added to those weak points because size equals strength will make you bigger at your big exercises, in which case you'll get bigger all the way around. It all does feed into each other. It does feed into each other. But you have to get stronger. The only guys who only do mostly fluff work with very high reps who are really, really jacked, it is 90% of their size is coming from the drugs that they are on. Every single time. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative.
and I will talk to you guys next time.